Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into parametric equations and now look further into the cycloid curve and go over a brief history of it, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So a history of the cycloid. One of the first people to study the cycloid was the famous Galileo Galilei, who proposed that bridges be built in the shape of cycloids and who also tried to find the area under one arch of a cycloid. And uh, also later this curve uh, arose in connection with the Brachistrone problem, I think that's how you pronounce it. And this is an interesting problem which basically states, find the curve along which a particle will slide in the shortest time under the influence of gravity from point A to a lower point B, not directly beneath A. So if you had, say, point A like this, and then if you draw a line across all the way to point B that's not directly below it. Yeah, now here the part of the problem is stating if we basically draw a curve that if you were to uh, drop a particle or a ball or whatever to see what will take the longest, I mean the, the shortest time to um, uh, reach B, what kind of curve would it be? For example, you could have a curve like this or a curve such as this, etc. And now in this problem, it turned out that the, uh, the Swiss mathematician John Bernoulli, who posed this problem in 1696, showed that among all possible curves that join A to B, the particle will, will take the least time sliding from A to B if the curve is part of an arch of a cycloid. So if we were to draw a cycloid shape, it might look something like this. Just to just give you an illustration. So this would be the cycloid, which is quite fascinating. Yeah, so and what's interesting is that basically from the definition of the cycle, it is just a rolling circle, which kind of makes sense. If you were going to drop a particle or a ball, it would roll, so you would obviously want to follow the, uh, the natural curve that would be created from a ball that rolls, and that's the cycle. Which is, again, this is very interesting stuff here. And also further into the history of the cycloid, the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens had already shown that the cycloid is also the solution to the totochrone problem. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, that is, no matter where a particle P is placed on an, inter uh, on an inverted uh, cycloid, it takes the same time to slide to the bottom. Yes, this is one of the uh, more fascinating stuff. It's so basically if you had, let's say, a cycloid shape like this, an inverted one, and basically if you had a particle P here, I'll call this uh, P1, and uh, just to show you that if you were to uh, drop this uh, and then see how long it takes to get to here, the bottom, let's write this is the bottom. So this is the bottom of the uh, cycloid. This would take the, uh, this would take a time T1, but if you had, let's say, another particle P, I'll call this P2, and then you drop it from here, it would take time t2 because this one notice that this will pick up speed faster this one you're not going to pick up speed as fast because you're starting at a low point and again doesn't matter where you started off here if you have p3 it will take t3 time and then let's say you had a point all the way across here which is uh or just put it over here this is let's say p4 and then this would go all the way down here this is p4 and what it turns out is that in fact, yeah, in fact, all the times are the same. So T1 equals T2 equals T3 equals T4, etc. This is quite amazing stuff. So it doesn't matter where you drop it, based because of this curve, it will fall uh, at the exact same uh, time to the bottom of it. And now a good application of this uh, this phenomenon is basically pendulum clocks. So Huygens proposed that pendulum clocks, which he also invented, swing in cycloidal arcs because then the pendulum takes the same time to make a complete oscillation whether it swings through a wide or a small arc. Yeah, this means you can scale it up pretty easily and you're still going to get the exact same uh, like ticks of a clock or seconds, etc. And also f looking further into this from Wikipedia, if you go to the history section of the cycloid, just, just want to show some uh, interesting thing I read. So the cycloid has been called the Helen of geometers as it, uh, it, as it caused frequent quarrels among 17th century mathematicians. This is the uh, reference to Helen of Troy that uh, I think the Greek goddess. So 
Yeah, something like that. Anyways, so historians of, mathemat of mathematicians have proposed several candidates for the discoverer of the cycloid. Math mathematical historian Paul Tannery cited similar work by the Syrian philosopher Lambl Lamblicus, I think that's how you pronounce it, it's hard to pronounce, as evidence that the curve was likely known in antiquity, so just really old. English mathematician John Wallace, writing in 1679, attributed the discovery to Nicholas of Cusa, but subsequent uh, scholarship indicates Wallace was either mistaken or the evidence used by Wallace is now lost. And uh, Galileo Galilei's name was put forward at the end of the 19th century, and at least one author reports credit being given to Martin Merzen, beginning with the work of Mortis Cantor and and Sigmund, Sigmund Gunther. Scholars now assign prior, priority to French mathematician Charles de Bovelles based on his description of the cycloid in his Introductio in Geometrium. I think that's Spanish or something. Actually, no, that's French. Never mind. Uh, it published in 1503. In this work, Bovell's mistake in the arch uh, traced by a rolling wheel as part of a larger circle with a radius 120% larger than the smaller wheel. Yeah, I think yeah, this he means that uh, it's rolling around a uh, another wheel instead of just a straight line, but I think that's pretty much the same thing. I'll have to look at that further. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, Galileo originated the term cycloids. He was the first one to actually say that it's cycloid and was the first to make a serious study of the curve. So yeah, as you can see here, a lot of people are just uh, arguing whether, uh, uh, like, who was the originator or the founder of the cycloid. But again, what matters most is well, people that just write it down, what they what, what they call it, and then go go about studying it rigorously, like Galileo, Galilei, and that's why he's more famous than a lot of these other mathematicians. Anyway, that's all for today. If you learned from this very interesting uh, history lesson on the cycloid, as well as some of the cr some of the very cool applications and interesting uh, concepts or problems that the cycloid happens to solve, like this one here, where the shortest time is a cycloid shape. And the time it takes from any part, any uh, area or any region will take the exact same amount of time to roll back to the bottom. Again, I think I believe this is all, this is all due to the nature that it's defined based on a rolling circle. So basically, if you were to find out how fast something rolls down, or the shortest time it rolls down a curve, you would try to replicate how the nature of the rolling, let's say a ball or particle, for example. And it was all for today. If you'll learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.